how do I score a pixel in center stage? Scoring is obviously a very important task in center stage, and pixels can be scored in one of two locations, the alliance-specific backstage area or their backdrop. The angled scoring zone is something we haven't quite seen in FTC before. This poses a unique challenge with being able to both reach up and out. The robot's height is something that teams may want to consider. While they may want to be a short robot to get under some of the restrictions in height, being able to reach the highest level of the backdrop may require them to extend incredibly high. Teams should be aware of their center of gravity when reaching up and out of their robot. When placing a game piece, teams will want to be fairly precise because when they're dropped, they have a tendency to bounce around and who knows where they'll end up. One neat feature about this year's game is your ability to carry two pixels at the same time. Teams that can hold multiple game pieces will likely be able to take less trips to score the same amount. When attempting to obtain the mosaic bonus, teams will want to take special care in which game piece colors they pick up. Teams should note how they hold a pixel. For example, holding on the sides may prove difficult when trying to place against a wall. Alternatively, Holding up and down may be difficult when they try to release. There are many mechanisms teams can use to score on the backdrop. This arm can reach to either place on the front or place backwards to be able to reach higher. This is a really simple solution that we chose for the ease of use of the team. This method is fairly quick and easy to put together and allows for the teams to optimize many things such as gear ratio and claw design. Single stage arms such as this, while simple, do not have the ability to place at higher levels, and so teams should take this into account. This arm, while not incredibly precise, can control the angle of the game piece, making it less likely for it to bounce out. Mechanisms like a floor bar are special because they keep the output orientation the same all the way through its motion. Teams may find this useful so they can know the orientation of their game piece the entire time it's in their robot. This robot's compatible floor bar mechanism is what's known as a virtual floor bar. It uses chain and sprocket to keep the output in the same orientation no matter what angle the arm is. This particular robot is special. It's got an arm that can both rotate and extend. This could be really useful when picking up game pieces away from your robot, being able to reach high up and place them. Additionally, because it's an arm, it allows the robot to stay at a low height a design like this allows you to keep your weight incredibly low, but still be able to reach a very high height. An extension mechanism like this is a one-stage extension that uses ball bearings for a very smooth extension. On the backside, it includes a motor with a double spool, which allows you to both extend and retract using the motor. This is a multi-stage elevator for robots. It uses ball bearings and our cable to be able to go all the way up to the top. A lift system like this allows you to manage your space, folding down incredibly compactly and being able to keep your CG low when you want it to stay low. Teams may find linear systems easier to control than arm-based systems because the output always moves in a straight path. When designing and building your lift system, teams need to consider how high you need to reach as well as some of the other obstacles on the field that may keep you low. Always remember to consult the game manual before designing your robot. And that's how you score a pixel in center stage.